has made us flawless. Thank you for the cross was enough. Thank you that your grace is sufficient. And thank you that your blood is patient, it is kind, and it is forgiving. Today may our souls sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And we pray all this in his name. He was and is and is to come. Amen. Our opening hymn is on page 102. Now, thank you all our God. We have a lot to be thankful for. Let's sing about it.
forebears have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our forebears, when they were in Egypt, did not consider your wonderful works. They did not remember the abundance of your steadfast love, but rebelled against the Most High at the Red Sea. God saved them for the sake of his holy name, to make known the mighty power of God. God rebuked the Red Sea, and it became dry, and led them through the deep as through a desert. So God saved them from the hand of the foe, and delivered them from the hand of the enemy. And the waters covered their adversaries, not one of them was left. Then they believed God's words, they, they sang God's praise. They made a calf in horn and worshipped a molten image. They exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox in his grass. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt. Wondrous works in the land of Ham, and terrible things by the Red Sea. Therefore the Lord intended to destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach to turn away God's wrath from destroying them. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. And let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Pray and 
Lord, for a moment we pause, we contemplate the blessings of our lives, even the things that we struggle against, but as they grow, help us to grow closer to you. Lord, in love, let us give back. Let us tithe from all of who we are. That as we give to you, you bless it, multiply it, use it in your service here on earth, and help us ever to more grow into your presence in Christ's holy name.
The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. Please do be seated. As we unite our hearts in prayer, y'all tell me something good. What are we giving thanks to God for? Leon's birthday. It's Leon's birthday again. Party for a week. Anybody else? Maybe. Fall weather. Go ahead. Fall weather? Yeah. Pretty out? It's a blessing for me to be able to go to worship with my high school English teacher and my first grade teacher. Miss Bob and Carol. Anybody else? It was a good football week. Lots of upsets. There's not an amen cue out there? All right. Uh, it has been a, a fantastic week in a lot of ways, but it's also been a, a very tumultuous week and a scary week. Um, everybody knows Hurricane Ian hit Florida, and burnt through Florida, and then went into the Carolinas. Uh, and our hearts go out to those. There's a lot of destruction. They still don't know. Uh, you know, how bad things are down there. Uh, particularly with Lois and David Peacock's children and grandchildren, they have a, about four homes down that way. Two of them took on a good bit of water and had damage for a variety of reasons. Uh, and so remember them, but the thing is, is, is she, she finally heard from the last of them, they're all okay, everybody's fine. But some of them were in ground zero, and uh, you know, everything around them was totally destroyed. Uh, as far as uh, my family, we're all doing good. Everybody's fine. They've lost power a little bit, but, but uh, no major damage. <coughs> so thanks to God for that. So uh, I can tell you that uh, the United Methodist Commission on Relief uh, is poised and ready to go down. There will be teams that are going down. It's not, it's not time yet. They call themselves early responders, not first responders. Uh, so let's pray for our first responders. Those are the folks that are down there making the power line safe and trying to clear the roads and, and the police and the, the rescue folks, we pray for them in the midst of all that. But uh, when we're asked to step up, uh, let's be in prayer and be supportive. Who else? Roger's been in and out uh, struggling with his uh, condition, so Roger, we keep you in our thoughts, and uh, we also uh, continue to, okay, you want to give an update? Oh, uh, Phil goes Thursday to find out what is to be done about a leaky valve in his heart. Okay. Continue to pray for Phil. And don't forget about our folks at home. Uh, let's pray for the Gordons. Let's uh, pray for the Polks. Um, there's a lot of folks that are out there. Who's got somebody they're, you know, they're just keeping on their, to themselves in their own heart? God knows our prayers. Just hang on to that. But you know, one of the ways that we commune with God is through prayer. What a blessing that is. So as we unite our hearts, let's claim that presence. And as we pray, the Lord be with you. that are now without home, those that are 
uncertain about their future. For those that are still in harm's way, those that have lost much more than just things of the physical nature, but even some have lost life. Lord, our heart goes out to them because here in Mississippi, we certainly know about storms and winds that blow, and we know about damage from storms, even all the way up here in the Jackson area. Lord, I pray for all of those that are involved that are helping to be a helping hand. Lord, that you guide them and that you strengthen them. And Lord, even though we may not be able to do something about South Florida, and as we try and do what we can here in Florence, Mississippi, Lord, I pray that you just give us strength. Sometimes our battles are not against nature, but they're against our physical bodies and against the ways of this world. Lord, remind us that you are still in control, even when it seems like we wonder where you are. Speak to us once again in our heart of hearts that we may know your presence, that we may know your comfort, that we may know your strength. We pray all this in Christ's holy name.
y'all don't know about me is that I have to be good so much part of the week except on Wednesday evenings where it's my job to give Missy the harvest time time. Yes, <laughs> The joys in life. I want to read from Philippians chapter 4 if you want to join with me. Philippians chapter 4. And I'll start reading in verse 4, but I, I might, I'll back up to a little bit. Context, I think, is everything. I mean, when you read the Bible, it, it's important to, to know a little bit of history, know a little bit about who wrote what and what time, what situation, and why they're writing, and why it was important then, but also why it's important now, because the Bible is true today is just as much as it was yesterday. That's the beauty of the living Word of God. But I think the first thing you need to know about uh, Philippians is that it was probably one of the last books that Paul wrote. Uh, if it wasn't the last, it was one of the last. And it was one of the last because Paul was about to be executed. So, you know, it's good times. And as Paul writes to the church, he is in jail. And Roman jail is not like jail today. Jail today, they have to take care of you. They have to feed you. They have to clothe you. They have to give you a place to sleep. They have to keep you busy. You've got rights in jail today. Even though it may not be the best of food, it may not be the best of clothes, you are taken care of. In Roman jail, back in the first century, you were not taken care of. They threw you in there, and whatever happened to you, happened to you. They did not feed you. They did not clothe you. They didn't worry about you know whether you were hot or cold. They just threw you in there. You were dependent upon folks that knew you and folks that loved you to come and bring you food and to take care of you. And that may have a lot to do with your survival. So Philippians is written because the church at Philippi, a church that Paul started a long time ago, early on his probably his second missionary journey, uh, this church sends somebody to help take care of Paul while he's in jail. And he writes in chapter 1, verses 3, he says, I thank my God every time I think of you. Wow, I mean, that's a, that's a beautiful letter. Philippians is probably one of the happiest books of the Bible that you can read. If you want to be uplifted, read Philippians. But it's written in one of the worst times of Paul's life. And that's perhaps the power and the beauty of it. So the church at Philippi, it had struggles like all churches do. He even, he closes out, he says, uh, uh, he says, I even plead to Eudoia and I plead with, uh, I can't even say this right, uh, Sintic to agree with each other in the Lord. So there was scrabbles and fights even within the church. Paul pleads with these women to, to get together because the cause, the cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ is important and we can't do this alone. And so he closes, giving encouragement to the church, saying, pay attention. It's the worst Worst days of Paul's life, but here's what he tells the church. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, and dare I say sisters, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about these things. Whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen of me, put it into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. Folks, it's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Lord, I thank you for Paul's words that speak true to us even today. So may we be touched by your Holy Spirit in Christ's name. Amen. I spent a lot of time reading the New Testament, I guess maybe this past year. And one of the things I think that in in reflection of maybe the past three years is that nothing's new. If you read the first century, the things that they struggled with, the politics of the times, the things that the first church was up against, 
They've been through this before. And they persevered. And they persevered because they overcame because of what Christ has done for them. The church did not end in the first century. The church grew by leaps and bounds when it was even up against the hardest struggles of its time. So Paul writes the encouragement to a church that struggles. First of all, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. I think that's the first thing that we as Christians do. Is we need to claim our faith and rejoice in the things that are around us. Rejoice in the blessing of our lives. Rejoice in all that we are given. Even when we are struggling up against somebody. I, so many people have said, you know, I've got it rough, but I always know somebody else has got it rough. And that is true. But, you know, God knows your own particular struggles. But I think it's important even that we can bless God in our struggles. Romans 5 says, I thank God for my suffering. And I think that's the stupidest verse in the Bible I've ever heard. Thank God for my suffering. Why should I do that? You read further because suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And in hope there are all things. My sister used to say, I've got enough character. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe you would agree with that. Folks in Florida are getting a lot of character right now. But rejoice. Some of them are rejoicing just because they have their minds. Rejoice in the Lord always. Let gentleness be evident to all. Does our world seem like a gentle world these days? It's hard to be gentle when we see things like, you know, the annexation of Ukraine. People against their will. It's hard to be gentle when we see things going on that just seem to get under our crawl. And when so many things are happening and it just doesn't seem like there's any responsibility whatsoever. Uh, the other, it was a Monday, I think it was, I think I got no less than 14 malevolent emails and a couple texts that I know were, were just trying to give me, if I tap on that, next thing you know, my credit card's gone. <laughs> you know? And there's, is there no way to find these people? Is there no way to stop this? And it makes me so mad. But yet, even in the midst of that, I've got people in front of me. I've got people in Florence area. I've got people that, that I meet. People still need water in Jackson. People that are struggling down in Florida. And we're, it's so easy to have this knee-jerk reaction in meanness and hatefulness. It's so easy to respond to violence with violence. Yet Paul calls us to gentleness. Let gentleness be evident all because the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Yeah, that's hard. But in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God. We're called to be prayerful. We're called to be prayerful even in the midst of the struggles that we're up against. Prayer, I, I think so many times the church misses it that we think that prayer comes when we want God to do something and we pray, and so if God does it, then, then that's what we get. It's kind of like God's like Santa Claus, you know? You make your petition for what you want on Christmas Day, and you get it. That's not the way God works. I'm not saying that's not the way God can work. Sometimes God does that. But more likely, what prayer is about is about inviting God into our lives daily in all of our struggles and all of our suffering so that we know that we're not alone in this. When we pray, it's not that God usually changes the things around us, but God usually changes me. God changes those who pray. And we have new eyes, we have new heart, we have new strength. And what does this do? This lifts us up. This brings us up to be bigger than this. Transcends all understanding, a peace that transcends and lifts us up even in the struggles of the world. Man, wouldn't you like that in a pill? Wouldn't you like that in some kind of quick shot? It doesn't always come quickly, but it comes with years and years and years of prayer and perseverance and character building. And time and time and time again, we come to God and say, lift our hearts. And then finally, verse 8, whatever is true, 
listen to this, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if there's anything excellent or praiseworthy, think about this. Put your mind on this. Our scriptures, our God does not ask us to take our brain out of our head and throw it away, but to think about these things. Compare it to the rest of the scriptures in the Bible. Be in prayer over this. Lift it up, ponder it, read about it, study it. As we look in the world, there's so many people trying to tell us this truth or that truth. If it doesn't compare to the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, self-control, if it doesn't have, if it's not admirable or true or noble, it's not of God. Let's get this stuff out of our lives. It holds us back. It weighs us down. It makes us anxious. It makes us angry. It brings us to violence. But we're supposed to take on these good characters and put them into practice. In this way, we transcend all of the struggles of the world. I pray for God to change that hurricane, but the hurricane still is. Some of you pray for your loved ones to be healed or to overcome. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they work. Thing is, God was with us always. We transcend, we overcome because God is with us. Now, wouldn't it be great? Now, I said, wouldn't it be great if we had a pill? But wouldn't it be great if we had some way to remember about what God has done for us? For us to remember the mighty acts of Jesus Christ that helps us to overcome. Oh, yeah. We're supposed to come to the table. So, Mike Sockovitz used to say, don't forget, it's about, they tried to kill us. <laughs> we survived. Now let's see. Christ is coming. Remember the mighty acts that Christ has done for us. Remember and celebrate. Rejoice in the Lord always. Live a life that is full of gentleness and peace and self-control. Be prayerful in all things and give it to God. And put all this into practice because we know we thought about it. We studied it. And this is of God. And as we do this, we are invited once more to remember what Christ has done for us. I invite you to turn to page 13 in your hymnal as we look at the liturgy once again.
And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer that Christ calls. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our invite first of all the servants if you would come up. table is set. We're going to invite our, our choir to come down first. I'll remind you that this is an open table that talks about communion. This is for the faith of all Christians and Christians of all faiths. We invite you to come under the direction of the usher. Any money that might be left will go to our, our fall uh, harvest festival that will be for the kids at the end of this month.
peace of God which transcends all understanding that will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
upon you and give you peace. But all God's children say, Amen. Amen.